Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what an awesome morning to be in God's house. Amen? Amen. 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 We acknowledge our Creator God who has given us this space that we can gather freely and worship Him. And we would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land on which we gather here today, the Ghana people, and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging and remind ourselves that the Salvation Army and we as members and friends of the Salvation Army are committed to reconciliation at every possible opportunity. I'd already chosen this as a call to worship but I think it's especially appropriate after hearing that lead-in band piece, and you'll understand when I get to certain spaces. So I'm going to read the whole of Psalm 98, which says, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. Amen. This is the God who we worship and who we have come to adore here today. It is a good day today. Any time we can gather in this way is a good day. But today is an especially good day because a little later on in our service, we have the opportunity to welcome into uh, full membership, Salvation Army Soldiership, um, David Gaskin. And how exciting is that going to be? <laughs> and so I spoke with David and I said... Is there a particular song you would like for us to use in the service? And straight away, without even batting an eyelid, he told me what song and which arrangement of that song he particularly wanted. And so, because of the nature of that song, we're singing it right at the start, okay? And it is a familiar church song that says, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. Now, this is one of those songs where we don't sing it as written there in those four lines, okay? So we sing the first two lines, and then when we get to line three, we sing that line two times, and when we get to line four, we sing that line three times, okay? Got it? First two lines, third line, we sing it twice, fourth line, we sing it three times. Just, my hint is... Just keep singing the last line until we're ready to move on to the next one, all right? If you get lost, just stick with the last line. Just keep singing it over and over. There are four verses, and with this particular arrangement, we're going to start at the start, and we're not going to stop until we get to the end, all right? I invite you to stand as we sing this song of praise and glory to the Lord. <laughs>
Amen. Well done. That was amazing. Those words of that last verse, he breaks the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. Amen. Please be seated. Don't stay standing while I'm waffling on. That's all right. Oh, okay. Well, there's another event happening in the city today, so our usual good news bringer is unable to be here. So we have a special guest good news bringer this morning. So I'd invite you to give your attention to Robin as she comes and shares the good news today. Now, I can't compete with, with some certain people, but good morning, Ingle Farm. <laughs> and good morning to the great... Oh, no, sorry. Good day to everyone out of Ingle Farm. So it's across the world. We're going to international. Okay. I'm going to use this as well. I've got, no, I've got notes, as you can see. Starting off, how blessed have we been this week? We've had some rain. I know it came when they didn't say it was going to come, but it was really good. So now the gardens are happy, all refreshed, and everything's nice and clean and shiny. And I hope your week's been a really good one. Good news highlight, as Belinda has already mentioned today, is that we're here to share with David as he becomes a senior soldier. Congratulations and God bless you, David. Now, let's see what I've got. A reminder, don't forget the My Drakes app. Select the Salvation Army Ingle Farm at, for your choice for community do dollars. That'll all come to us, apparently. Now, you do realise it's only 29 sleeps till Christmas. How good is the news that as a church, we have so many opportunities to be able to get out and share with our community, and especially at Christmas time. So I've got a list. <laughs> okay, are we ready? In the next few weeks, we have lots of great events happening. Now, I hope the team out at the back can keep up with me. Firstly, oh, all of these things, of course, all of these things you can all participate in and be part of. Messy Church this afternoon, the last one for the year, so come along. We're celebrating Christmas. That's at four o'clock. Then we've got Christmas music is the theme for Companion Club tomorrow. That's at 10 a.m. Then we've Just Brass have their end of year concert on Thursday at five o'clock. Come and see how well the students do, and it's really lovely to be able to come and support them. And, stop, and afterwards, you can stop and chat with the families and, and over a sausage sizzle. 2 p.m. Sunday the 10th, our band, and we can just know how good this is going to be, just listen to them this morning, our band, along with the Campbelltown City Band, are joining to present the spirit of Christmas. And I know there's been a lot of practising going on too. I hear it at home. <laughs> it's, it, sometimes, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't sound like anything other than boom, 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 but it's, it comes out really, it comes out really well on a Sunday. Anyway. Tickets are $10 and $5 for children. Um, and yes, there will be afternoon tea afterwards. So come and see what happens there. Ingle Farm Shopping Centre is having the... We're participating in the gift wrapping. There's rosters out on the front. Please come and put your name down if you can allocate some time to be part of the team. It's fun and it's very rewarding meeting people and sharing in the Christmas spirit. Mawson Lakes, they've got a Christmas tree. There, if you want to talk to Peter, I'm sure he'd love to have some assistance with that because they're helping us at Ingle Farm. Now, the band's going to be going out to shopping centres, Rundle Mall and Homes to share over these next few weeks. Mainly music, first steps, playtime, home league, wonderfully made singers and band will all be planning their end of year breakups. So we pray for them as they come to the end of the year, pray for their leaders, pray for all the participants and I hope they pray they all come back refreshed for 2024. Play for Olive and her team as they prepare for, prepare for and hand out Christmas cheer for those struggling out there in the community in the next in the next coming weeks. And we're having a and don't forget on the 17th on Sunday there's a special carol service. Bring your family and friends, and then of course the best will be Christmas Day, 9:30 a.m. There's a service to celebrate the birth of Christ birth of Jesus. All this and more will be in the newsletter after the, available after the meeting, so don't forget, 
Take note, put it in your diaries so you don't forget because we know how busy everyone is and have an awesome God-filled week. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to introduce the prayer... What's it called? The prayer station. I thought, a table? No, it's not a table, it's a station. Um, Belinda highlighted the last verse of the song we sang about Jesus' blood being able to make us clean. I mean, it sounds a bit yucky being washed in blood, doesn't it? But Jesus can take away all our sins. So our prayer station this week is a prayer station of confession. We are all sinners, saved by the grace of God, and it's your opportunity to come. There's little sticky notes. Briefly write your sin. You don't have to be detailed. Write your sin on it, and then either rip it up, screw it up, and put it in the rubbish bin because Jesus promises to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He wants to forgive us. We just need to come. Um, There's a scathing verse, if you read in the middle, where Jesus is telling off the Pharisees. He's actually pointing out their sins. Although it seems harsh, he's pointing them out so that they can repent and be saved. So come to the station, spend time with God, have your sins forgiven and be free of guilt and shame and any fear because Jesus loves you. Good morning. I have the, the Bible reading this morning and it's 2 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, 1 to 15. And I'm reading from the New International Version. The, co- the collection for the Lord's people. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave us much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much. The God... And the one who gathered little did not have too little. 
Amén. Thank you to the band for that message. Importance for all of us to be a light and to shine for our master. I've chosen a particular song for us to sing this morning as um, part of our enrolment service. And it's one that I think is important as you're embarking on this journey of soldiership, but it's also important for all of us who are disciples of Jesus. And the verse says, I would be true 
for there are those who trust me. I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. I would be brave, for there is much to dare. Now that sounds like a big ask, but the answer to all of that is in the chorus, which says, Jesus will help me. He is my friend. He'll lead and I will follow till life's very end. Amen? Amen. So we're going to sing the first verse and chorus with the help of the piano this morning. And as we sing, I'm going to ask that David come and join me on the platform that Neville will bring the core colours. And uh, Greg, if you'd like to join us as well, that would be wonderful. So thanks, Helen. as excited as I am to be part of this, to be able to witness this ceremony this morning. And I believe you've got family members who may or may not be watching on the live stream, either right now or be watching later this afternoon to see this because they can't be here today. And um, it's a significant step that you are taking and we are really pleased that you are choosing to take it today, David. I wanted to share with you just three verses from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, which say this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Being a soldier isn't a bed of roses. It's a bit of a fight just in, in the name. And I know that you've got what it takes to keep fighting for Jesus. Is that right? Yep. Excellent. All right. Let me share with you some of this. The Salvation Army rejoices in the truth that all who are in Christ are baptised into the one body by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, all who wish to become soldiers of the Salvation Army and sign the Soldier's Covenant testify that they worship God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They have accepted Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord. They desire to fulfil their membership of his church as a soldier of the Salvation Army. They affirm their belief in the Bible as the Word of God and their acceptance of the Salvation Army's articles of faith. They declare that they will be responsive to the Holy Spirit and seek to grow in grace. They will make the values of the kingdom of God the standard for their lives, showing Christian integrity in their deeds, maintaining Christian ideals in their relationships and upholding the sanctity of marriage and family life. They will be faithful stewards of all they have and are. They will abstain from the use of all enslaving substances and harmful activities. They will be active in God's work, both in sharing the gospel and in serving the needy and will contribute financially to its support. They will be true to the principles of the Salvation Army. They witness that they freely enter into this covenant, convinced that the love of Christ requires the devotion of their lives to his service for the salvation of the whole world. And they declare their determination by God's help to be true soldiers of the Salvation Army. Do you, David, declare in the presence of God and this congregation that you undertake by the help of the Holy Spirit 
to live and work as a true soldier of Jesus Christ and of the Salvation Army according to the witness and promises you make this day? If so, raise your right hand and say, I do. I do. Excellent. We've already um, had a copy of the covenant signed by David, but this is the what they call the illuminated copy. I don't know why it's illuminated. To me, that means it should have lights on it. But I think what it basically means is it looks a lot prettier. And so what I'm going to invite you to do, David, is we will head, and I'll invite Major Peter to come too, we'll head down to the mercy seat over there so that you can sign this document in front of everybody, and then I'll sign it and Major Peter will sign it as well. Okay, so you take that and we'll head down there. I've invited Greg up here because Greg was the um, one who this time around spoke with David and, and did his classes with him, his conversation. I'm just wondering if we can put his eplets on. Would that be all right? I'll undo this button. You can, you can, I think that's a good plan. Is it you stand on the step? You can tell he's taking this very seriously, can't you, Dave? I'm not sure he's cracked a smile yet, but you never know. And these are some of the brand new Ingle Farm um, eplets that we've got here. And these are a gift from the core to you today. Thank you, Greg. No blood was spilt or anything. That was pretty good. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, present you back with your certificate. So I shake your hand. There you go. I present you back with your certificate. And they're all going to want to see this. And I'll say, in the name of the Lord whom we love and serve, I accept your declarations and receive you, David, as a soldier of the Ingle Farm Corps of the Salvation Army in Australia. Amen. <laughs> Now, Greg, I'm going to invite you to pray and you might need to go to the mic because I don't have a spare one around. But we'd like to pray. Those of you who can, would you like to join us by standing? Just before we pray, I would just like to say it was a privilege to be able to spend time in preparation for soldiership. And it was interesting. I think I received more in those sessions than David may have. But it was a great time and a privilege. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of David. We thank you for his influence and presence in this congregation of believers. Lord, we um, ask you to be with him in his daily walk with you, that he'll constantly know you're present, strengthening him in his faith, and may we as a congregation encourage and assist and dear Lord, we thank you that he's chosen this place to be his spiritual home. Lord, bless David, he makes a decision to stand for you. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 All right, please be seated. Thank you, Neville. You can uh, return the flag. David, we'd love to hear your testimony today. So you can pop your covenant there so it's nice and flat. God helps me get through good times, bad times, 
and just knowing God is will and I trust that and every time I have bad times I always can tell God's in my life and I really am blessed by God what he keeps doing every day and it's been a really inspiration just from all the images I've got from God and it's been really powerful. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're going to join uh, in singing together the second verse of this song, which says, I would be friend of all, the foe, the friendless. I would be giving and forget the gift. I would be humble, for I know my weakness. I would luck up and laugh and love and lift. And just as David has committed himself to the covenant, those of us who've made our own covenant, we're reminded of all of those promises. And I pray that God will continue to help us to live up to those promises. So let's sing this verse together. Thanks, Howard. the children. Good morning everyone. I think we've got a couple of children here today. Last week we had seven. I think we've got a couple here at least. So if you'd just like to come down and sit on the front row there, on the chairs, because you need to be facing the platform. <clears throat> you know, Greg and I had that discussion years ago about the illuminated forms. I think Greg even turned the light off once and checked in the dark that it, <laughs> that it didn't glow, and it didn't. So I think they're illustrated, but the army has always called them illuminated for some reason. 65 years ago he did that, is it? Oh. Okay. Right. Our topic this morning is what does good look like? Because we're believing in good, so what does good look like? Now, if you come here to Ingle Farm during the week, you will get plenty of chances to see what good looks like. There are chances to meet, for people to meet with their friends, have tea and coffee and a snack together, places like Companion Club and Home League. There are times when people come in here to talk to somebody or because they might need some help with something. Um, there are all sorts of things that happen from here. In the past, there have been sort of large groups of people employed here, helping with housing um, and just general support of our community. And of course, when you come in the front door, you'll notice that we've even got a washing machine and a dryer. So if somebody is living in their car, they have to wash their clothes somewhere, don't they? So... And there's a shower, and you can get a towel and have a shower. There are all sorts of doing good type things that you can see happening right here. So this morning we are focusing on what kind of things are good things to do. In the scripture reading that Mari read so well to us earlier, it says about giving, giving money. And a lot of the good things that happen here at Ingle Farm would not happen unless us and other people were good 
at giving money to help these things to happen. And Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and he said, hey, you know, there are people over there that are having a bad time. Can you help them out? And it was money. He said, like, give what you can. You can't give what you haven't got, but you need to be able to give according to what you already have. Like, Caden, if I asked you to give me $1,000, you couldn't do that, could you? No. And even if you could, you probably wouldn't want to. But I thought there is one place in the Bible where Jesus talks about exactly what doing good looks like. And some of these things we can do and some of these things we have to help other people do. Now, you notice I have my trusted assistant over here to my right and he's going to help us with this. Jesus told a story and it's in Matthew 25 and it's called The Sheep and the Goats. Do you remember that story? Like he said, the king came and he said, right, you people go over there to the right, okay, and the rest of you go over there. And he said, the ones over here to the right, you're the goodies, you're the sheep. But sadly, the ones over there are the goats, right? They were not so good. And people were confused and they said, well, you know, why aren't I a sheep? And this is what he said. There was a king who was like a shepherd. Um, this isn't what Jesus said. He, Jesus said to the sheep and not to the goats, you have a special place in my father's heart. Come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom realm which has been destined for you since the foundation of the world. That is, right since the beginning, there has been something good planned for good people. And he said, this is what the sheep do that is so good. When you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you saw me thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. When I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Now, okay, this is where Greg is going to help us. Picture number one. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Okay. So there's a very helpful person. That's our reminder to do something good. Okay. Now, the next one we don't have a picture for because we, well, not we, I, uh, Greg, couldn't work out how to draw it exactly. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. Okay. What does that mean? Strangers, they need somewhere to have shelter, shelter from the weather, somewhere to sit down and relax. They need to have someone to talk to, somewhere to rest. So it's important to welcome people we don't know. And we were thinking some of the best experiences of our lives that we remember fondly are those where we have become involved with people that we didn't know at all. Do you remember Monty and Mera that used to come here? Yes, they, they were just so lovely to have them part of our lives. And this one, I needed clothes and you covered me. Okay? You know, I was thinking, you know, I've got... I've got in my cupboard, I've got um, like a fur stole. I thought I could bring that along. But that's really not what this is about. This is about people who really need good clothes to wear around. You don't need fancy clothes. You just need good clothes. And what do we do here? We've got three thrift shops. Denise, you could buy good clothes at your thrift shop, couldn't you? Wouldn't cost a lot of money? No? No? So it's important to help people 
look good and feel good. All right, the next one. I was sick and you looked after me. Okay, now I won't tell you what Greg was going to draw under the bed. I told him not to. <laughs> okay, so what do you do if someone's sick? Well, yes, okay. You can take them flowers. I've, I've been known to cook chicken soup, um, you know, and pasties even. When people are sick, it's nice not to have to worry about where their food is going to come from. If you take them something to eat, that's nice. Okay, and the last one. I've only ever done this once. Have you ever visited anybody in prison? When I was quite young, I went with the Songster Brigade and we sang. And the Songster leader chose the song, The Wasted Years. Now, I thought that was a bit cruel. I thought that was rubbing it in a bit. Okay, so we can't just go down the road, up Grand Junction Road and knock on the door and say, oh, I've come to visit some nice prisoners. It doesn't work like that. But last week, Robert was here. Those of you who know Robert, he's in, uh, involved in some prison ministries. The Salvation Army has prison chaplains where people go into the prison and help them. They usually do things for them at Christmas time. This is what doing good stuff looks like. It's also being kind to one another. We pray for one another here. Um, and it's always a blessing when someone comes and says, we're praying for you this month. It's always a special time. So, this is what doing good looks like. Sometimes it's saying hello to somebody, getting them a cup of coffee, whatever. So, think about how you can do good. Lots of good things happen here, but... Perhaps there's something that Jesus will tell you that you need to do that's good. Because Jesus said, every time you help someone who needs help or if they're in trouble, it's just like doing it for him. So Jesus says, if you do something good for somebody, it's doing it for me. We all need to be people who can help others when they're having a difficult time. So let's try to remember this week how we can help others who need kindness and a helping hand.
Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today as blessed people, people who are grateful and thankful for all the good gifts you give to us. And Lord, as we have brought our monetary givings to you today, we just pray, Lord, that we give these so that in this place we can do good. And so pray, Lord, that uh, as we have given from our hearts today, may it indicate our thankfulness to you for all that you give to us. Bless those, Lord, who in this place have that responsibility of seeing where it can best fit in our mission and our vision and our values in Ingle Farm. Bless us, Lord. Help us to be thankful every day for all that you give to us, we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. Father God, you are good to us. You are so, so good to us, more than we deserve. And as we take some time to reflect about what good looks like and how perhaps we might be able to be better good in our life, in our community, in our walk with you, I ask that you give us the attention that we need today. Speak through your servant. Empower him so that we can hear your voice clear and plainly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are an army of believers. Many of us believe in God, but we all believe in bringing good to our world and the transformational power of hope. Every day across Australia, our teams unite with a common purpose, to lend a helping hand to those in need. We are driven by our mission to do good, not just for some, but for everyone. We believe good can transform a life, even in the bleakest of situations. But the question is, does the rest of Australia know just how good good can be? We believe the good news of Jesus brings hope to the world. And it's this belief that drives us to find new ways and places where we can make a difference. Whether it's extending a hand to those facing disadvantage, isolation or disconnection, or building thriving, healthy communities, it's all possible because we believe in the good. Every 17 seconds, our services answer a call for help. That's over 5,000 reasons to believe in the good right there, every single day. Each year, we provide newfound employment opportunities to more than 15,000 people. Another reason to believe in good. We're also doing a bit of good for the planet. Each year, Salvo Stores helps divert around 35 million items away from the landfill. That's a whole lot of good for the future. There's a reason why we, the Salvos, believe in good. It's right there in our vision statement, the love of Jesus. I believe in God and I believe in good. I believe in good. At the Salvation Army, we believe in good. Well, good morning. How are we? Thank you, Josh. We're nice and loud. Wake you all up. Good job. All right, God is good, yeah? How good has this morning been? To see a soldier come in a mix, to see just everything that goes on, have children's story, they just oh, you pretty much walk away and thanks for coming, amen, give you a benediction because that worked so well. God is good. And I think when we started this journey and uh, when me and Belinda decided that we were going to share this Believe in Good, the new action and the new branding for the Salvation Army, we thought, how are we going to make this interesting? How are we going to actually make this land that we can get off that God is good? We didn't have to do anything. I think over the last four weeks, it has been a good example that God is good. Amen? I've enjoyed it. As much as it is as trying to uh, explain the scriptures that come with this and, and where it all goes from, God is good. The world is inherently good, isn't it? Don't do this. It's not all bad out there. It is good because we have a God who is just amazing. And I started when we first uh, looked into this and I spoke on the radical good. If you remember that, four weeks ago. Because what did God do when he created all the earth? He stopped. And what did he say? It is good. It is very good. God created it. Our creator God created the world for us. I spoke on the radical good, that sometimes the amazing, sometimes shocking effort that we put in to change someone's life is so out there and so unexpected in this world, but it is good. Erica spoke on the good news, that all people are made in the image of God. God became man to show his love for the world. Christ came to set his people free from anxiety and fear so that they can feel love. Last week, Belinda spoke about God who is good, that as a shepherd cares for their sheep 
as he knows them and they know them, or his voice, that they're able to live and live life in his fullness. We are not fluffy sheep, but we are people that follow and believe. And because God knows us, we then have the ability to know him and know that he is good. So the last part of this series is, what does good look like? What does good look like? And Greg and Lynn, you nailed it. (laughs) That was great. It's about being love for other people when it's unexpected because we get that unexpected love from God. The scriptures and the teaching of Jesus tells us that the world is an interrelated community. We all exist together. We know not... We might not be able to see the workings of the community every day. There's things that go on that you don't know about. The world operates around the clock. For those that get paper delivered to your front door, anyone get that anymore? I was thinking about it. It still happens. There's someone that writes the stories. There's someone that prints the stories. There's a truck that delivers it. There's a guy that runs out and drops it off wherever it needs to go. We don't have milk bottles delivered to our door anymore. Anyone actually have that done anymore? There is a company that's starting to deliver glass bottles back to your doors just to get back to waking up in the morning and opening your front door and finding your milk bottle. I never did that, ever. But milk is still collected. It's still collected from a cow every day. It's bottled. It's shipped up. It's at your shopping centre when you walk in there. But there was someone that was up at four o'clock in the morning ready to milk those cows. When you wake up in the morning early to go and get a drink, you flick on the light and the power comes on. There's some person that's sitting at the power company, at the power station, making sure it's all working. He doesn't sit there and go, I really hope that when Belinda gets up to get a drink at that time of the morning that her power works. He's just, I'm here to make sure the power works for the community. There's nurses, there's doctors. There's police, there's all our emergency services. All these things occur all the time, rolling along, doing its bit as part of the community. This working, functioning community is what God intended. Very different to what we read from our scriptures to 2023, but we all live together, work together. And as Jesus says, it all strengthens our community. It makes us resilient. And as we use our gifts and our talents, the community becomes a useful part. We are not all dairy farmers. We are not all bakers. We are not all paper makers. But the way we help in our community, the way that God has gifted us and given us talents of how we interact with those people around us, where we work, where we play, where we use our gifts, where we use our money and our talents, it helps the wider community and the well-being of everybody. The passages from 2 Corinthians gives us a good indication of what does good look like. Paul, the apostle, was sharing their expectations and reasoning to the church. Paul was openly sharing that the church has excelled in everything in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in the complete earnestness to show love and kindness to others. But Paul was asking them to do and to go a bit further. He was asking them to excel in the grace of giving. In verse 8, he drives a point home and helps us understand of what does good look like. He says, I am not commanding you, but I want to test the, sincere, the sincerity of your love by comparing it to the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet from your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty may become rich. This verse is a reminder that the Son of God, all that he had, sitting on the right-hand side of his Father, having the kingdom of God and the richness of eternal life right there. 
became less than that so he may serve those that needed to know that they were loved. In layman terms, God, King, came to earth as a baby to live as a human, to suffer, so that he can show people, us, how to love others. That all that we have is God and all the world belongs to God. Our money, our wealth, our gifts, our talents are all his. He gave them to us to use for others as Christ came to earth to show. In Micah 6 and 8 he says, He has shown you, O mortal, that's us, what is good. And what does the Lord require you to do? To act justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Walk as Jesus did, love as Jesus did and show the world the goodness of God. This is not a new thing. This is not something that has been created just for something new to do. Our founder, William Booth, our general, understood that the urban poor in England was not being cared for. And the Salvation Army began, began to care for the whole person. The Salvos back then spoke against the injustice of the working people, the injustice of children, the injustice of the working life, and the injustice of the poor shared the love of Jesus with them, giving them food and shelter and feeding them food to their souls by letting know that the God that he followed, the God that he loved, is the God that loved them. All that we need to do is share the goodness of God, the love of Christ. And this builds a strong community using what we have, whether you are a person in the street, whether you are volunteering, whether you are here, whether you work and someone in your place needs some help, or whether someone comes here and, as you guys said, need a washing machine, need a dryer, need some food, need a shower and a towel, helping those who have little to gain more because of Christ. This is only going to be a short sermon today. I'm going to wrap it up because believing good today has been a great meeting. Enrolling in a soldier, sharing of all the things that we are going to be doing over Christmas to reach out to our community. And the last part of our scripture today just reiterates that. Our desire is not that others may be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply you what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much. The one who gathered little did not have too little. Our God is a great God. Our God is good. Believing or believing good should not be too hard. It should be what we do. And when we have that, and we understand that we have a good God, the only thing we can do is give thanks. And I was thinking, what are we going to sing? How are we going to wrap this up? And the two songs that we had and we come across, there's two versions of give thanks, two reasons to give thanks. One's a bit more reflective, one more the band's going to play. But it's give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he has given Jesus Christ his son. He's given his son to us so we know that he is good. That we know how to love. So that the weak may say, I am strong. That the poor may say, I am rich. 
because of what the Lord has done for us. Amen? Believe in good so that we know what the Lord has done for us. Let us sing, Howard. God, we give you thanks. We thank you that you are our creator God, that you created this earth for us, that, Lord, you brought us together in a community. You shared your son with us so that we know how to love you and how to love others. Lord, we give thanks that you continually guide us with your Holy Spirit so we may know what it is to be loved and to be out of love. Lord God, we give thanks to you that you are a good God, that we are able to believe in good and be that good that others need. Lord, thank you that you're able to give us the words and the wisdom to share with others, that our story and our own journey is what we need to share with others, that as we come to know you and to love you, And to see what you have to offer for us, that we can share that with others so they may know you as a good God. We give thanks to you, Lord. Amen. So our last song is Give Thanks to God, our God and King. He endures forever. This is the God that created the earth, that gave us his son, and he still has so much more to do. It doesn't end at one point because God is faithful. He's strong. He's for us now and forever. So I invite you to sing as we sing this song, uh, all three verses. Thank you, man. Let's stand. Oh,
and a benediction. May your day be blessed by moments of quietness, light in your darkness, but strength in your weakness, grace in your meekness, joy in your gladness, peace in your stillness. May your day be blessed by the goodness of God. Amen, and God bless you all.